Hey, welcome back to this one. So in the previous video, we're looking at select and, you know, basically how to use select clause uh, alone. But in this section, we'll be looking at how to combine select and the front clause. Um, with select alone, we could essentially do additions and we could print, you know, like strings. And of course, we could do some other calculations or print numbers. But the combination of select and from means that we can essentially pick out data from our tables. So in this one, we will first write our select and from. So remember, in this case, we'll be actually picking out the data from the uh, tables. So um, this is the table we have imported, the U.S. House Real Estate Essentials table. And then inside the uh, database, we essentially have the schema, which is essentially more like a folder. And then we can open the folder to see the views. Now, remember the views are very close to tables. So now in the views, we have a couple of views, which are synonymous in a way, not exactly uh, one for one synonymous to a table, right? So here we have a couple of, let's say tables. Um, and then in this tables, which is essentially different data sets, we will select one of them. So essentially maybe a very good one to select could be the FHAS, the F, this one, which is F, FH, um, FA house price attributes table. And, um, note that when we want to select from a database, we have to uh, when we want to select a table, we have to sort of write the address from the database to the schema, the table. So essentially we say from this database, um, down to this schema, down to this table. So one good thing we could do is the U.S. housing, real estate essentials. So you have uh, Snowflake already predicting this for us. And so we could just use the and then we put a dot. So this dot says now we have the database settled. Then which of the schema do we want? We know we want the cyber scene schema. Then we put tab. And then we put a dot. So here we could select which tables that we would like to view the data from. And then we just come to the attributes data. And then we put the, um, enter. And so here now we can essentially run a query. Hey, that's a little problem. The problem is, the problem we have here is we haven't really specified what we would like to select from this table. And so now we essentially need to say specifically what we would like to select from this table. So we could decide to select all columns from this table. And so by Writing a star, which is essentially like the asterisk uh, symbol on your keyboard, we can select all columns. So this is select star from the table. When we run the queries, then we get the whole table. We get the whole table and you can see the different columns in this table. We have the variable, the variable name, the property classification, column, you have the index type, you have the frequency, season adjusted, and then the units, right? Now, another thing that we could have done to actually see what columns are available for us in this data is to come to this database section and then click this data, right? And so when we click this table, we will see all the possible you know, columns that is sort of a available for us. So we could notice that, um, you know, we have this uh, variable, the variable name property classification, which is what you are seeing at this part. So you have the variable, the variable name property classification, and then you have the index type and stuff like that. So one way to, you know, make a select more purposeful. So assuming we only want to see the units, maybe we're not interested every column, but we only want to see the unit. One way to do that will be to select the unit column, right? You notice it's, you know, already bringing out the unit and it's saying it's a column. 
So this would have actually meant that we will only get the unit, right? So in this case, you have the unit. So only the unit column would have come out if we selected the unit column. So if we say we want to see the unit and we want to see the frequency, same thing, it will only select the unit and the frequency column. So we don't get all the data that we don't need. We only go for exactly what we need and then we use what we need alone. And so in the next part, I mean, I would like us to use a different data set, okay, to practice this. So one thing we could do maybe a bit better now is, you know, write this query in a different way. So notice that we have selected the database and then we have selected the schema. We've put the schema and then we've selected the table. Now, one way we could make this a bit different is to essentially come to this part of the um, sheet and say, okay, this is the database that I want to select. So it's like saying this is the default database. And then this is the default schema that I want to select from. And so this would mean that I wouldn't need to write all this part again. And then what I will just need to write in this case would be to just write the actual table. Just the table will be sufficient in this case, right? So let's go with this new, this other one, which is saying like the price time series. So we have the FFA. And so you notice now, this takes us directly to the views. And so when we run this, you notice that we didn't really need, oh, we're back with this problem again. again. And why are we having this problem? Because we didn't specify what column we like to select. So we put a star and then we run the query. And now what we essentially get is all the columns in the price attribute data. So we could expect what did the, the price uh, time series data. So we could expect now this columns here, we could expect to see them. And so this is interesting, of course. So assuming we are only interested in the date and value in this case, let's select on the date and then we select the value. And so we can run this query, right? And then we will get the date, and then the value columns. Another very inter interesting thing we could do here is we could add or multiply or do some extra, you know, additions or maybe some extra calculations to the existing columns. So one way to do that would be to do value plus five. So note that we have the value, right? And then we have the value plus five. So And so now the query essentially returns the date, the value, and then you have the value plus five. So essentially you have the value, which is 100.07, and then you add a five to it, and then you have 105.07. So you get like every rule, you get a plus five. Now, one like we said in the previous part, we could rename this to see value plus Five. Remember, we, we kind of said it makes sense to use the underscore as a convention. So now we have the value and then we have the value plus five column, right? So essentially we still have the same addition plus five, um, but then we have been able to rename this as value plus five. So another thing we could potentially do is say value plus value, right? which then now say as value, this is like when the value is doubled. So here you have the value 
You have the value plus five, and then you have the value plus value, which is essentially saying that we could add multiple columns. We could say, okay, we wanted to add value plus value, which is 160 plus 160 is giving us this 320. Similar way is 380.97 plus 380.97 plus is going to give us 761.9, right? It's essentially um, giving us, you know, a double of the, of the value. Okay. So this is interesting. Um, we could, in fact, use, you know, another column that we have calculated to, to another column. So let's say we have value plus value plus five. Now, one thing that will make our query neat is to put each, each column on one line. It makes it very neat. Right. It makes it very neat because then we're able to like, you know, identify when the column is changing. Right. So we have the date, we have the value, we have the value plus five, which is value plus five. We have the value plus value, which is value doubled. And then we have the value plus value plus five. Right. So this is essentially saying value plus what we calculated here. Right. Which is the value plus five. And then now we can call this as value double plus five. So when we run this, yes. So what it, does this tell us? It tells us that we can add a column to another column. We can add a column to a number or we can divide or we can do any kind of multiplication or that. And of course, if we want to add a string, right, we could say, okay, want to add a string to every room. We could essentially come and say, add a string, right? This is going to be another column. But in this case, let's call this a string column. Now you would notice I wouldn't be using the S sign. And this still works. It still works. So when you do not put as, as long as you put like a space, it will still function as though you put the as. So now you have like the string column, which is just saying add the string. So, I mean, what I mean here is saying like, remove this as, and as long as there's a space between this one here and the, you know, this value here, then it will essentially name as this. But run this as well. You will notice that it will still call this addition value plus five, which is 19 plus, which is 107. Now, this is a law. This is 13 minutes already. Um, I would like to go to the next part, which is essentially limit. Now, of course, the next one from the hierarchy that we have put here is joint, but we would, uh, because of the ease, we'll take it one at a time. Because of the ease, right? The easiest ones to, we will go with limits and then we will go, we'll continue. Thanks for joining.